the focus of the consultation and reflection is indeed on the statement on the cooperative identity. That statement was adopted in Manchester in 1995 on the 100th anniversary of the ICA. And it's a very important document. It set out for the first time the cooperative and ethical values that lie behind the principles that were drawn up by the Rochdale pioneers and later adopted by the international movement. It's the first time that a single clear definition of the cooperative business model has been set down. And the statement also updated the cooperative principles to reflect contemporary features of the movement. Now, more than 25 years have gone by since the statement was adopted. So now we're embarking on this reflection with the aim of deepening our cooperative identity, but also answering the question, how well has the statement stood the test of time? The process is being overseen by the advisory group that Santosh mentioned. There are 23 members in the group. The group is drawn from the larger ICA family. There are members of the global board in the group, but altogether we have a very good mix of practitioners, cooperative managers, cooperative board members, scholars, and uh, elected leaders from around the world. So what is it that we are aiming to do? So we want to conduct a deep and wide reflection on the statement. Now, those two words, deep and wide, are very important. So our aim here is to get right down to the grass roots, that's deep, and right across the world, that's wide. We want all of the different sectors that cooperatives are involved in to be part of this process. We want uh, every type of cooperative to be part of this process. So it's very ambitious. We're hoping that the process will serve to enhance the understanding among cooperatives of the cooperative identity and increase its strategic value in the eyes of cooperatives. We're hoping that the process will stimulate cooperatives to take actions that are consistent with our cooperative identity to address the problems facing our contemporary world. It's very important that we engage the movement's current leaders. It's equally important that we engage future leaders in examining the cooperative identity. So there is this intergenerational aspect uh, that we're looking for in the consultation. As I said before, we need to look at how well the statement on the cooperative identity has served its purpose. And we may well identify actions that the ICA can take to refresh, deepen, and protect the cooperative identity. So those are the, those are the broad uh, objectives of the process. Now, a few words on the process itself. So the first step in the process, actually, I should back it up a little bit. Um, I was going to say the first step was the, no, not the slides. That's okay. You can go ahead again. Uh, yeah, okay. So I was going to say that the Congress was the first step, but in fact, a paper was written ahead of the Congress that I would uh, recommend to people. It, it, it goes over uh, how the statement on the cooperative identity came to exist. It, it talks about our contemporary environment and the, the, the challenges that we face. So it really sets the stage for this whole consultation process. Then we had the Congress, and this seminar today is focused on reviewing the Congress outcomes. And as has been noted, they'll be published as well. So people will be able to go and have a look at them. Sessions were recorded. It's going to be possible to review uh, the recorded sessions as well. Now, we'll be surveying members of the ICA, but cooperators more generally as well throughout this process. Most cooperators are aware that there are cooperative principles. Probably most cooperators would be hard pressed to recite the principles. They, they might think that there are six principles. Some, some of us older cooperators uh, think in terms of six principles when these days there are seven. Uh, we suspect that it would be a smaller number of people who would be aware that the statement on the cooperative identity also addresses the underlying values that inspired the cooperative principles. 
or that the principles are really uh, intended to, 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 to help realize. We are going to find out though, just how well known the statement is. And beyond that, we hope to get top of mind opinions on the importance of the different elements of the statements on the on how well cooperatives are living the values and the principles but it's important here to stress that this is this is a survey at the beginning of the process so we really do want to get a kind of a baseline get a quick take on uh people's present thinking. We're not asking people to go away and uh, study the statement before they answer the, the questionnaire. That's, that's not the intention at all. Now, another important step in the whole process is to uh, collect together and to review existing material in the cooperative identity. There's a lot that's out there already. There's a lot to read that was produced as the 1995 statement was developed. There's a whole book on the 1966 uh, uh, process and the and 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 the principles and by the way it's worth reading if you if you have some time it's well written too if you're if you're worried about that anyway uh, there's there's a lot that's out there already and a lot of exploration has been going on some of it very recently within the regions of of the ICA for example so we want to make sure that that's brought into the process now it's meant to be a consultative process and that means that we have to reach out. Uh, how do we do that? Today is, is uh, terrific uh, from my perspective because it, it, it points up uh, the limitations of, of this kind of, um, uh, of this kind of venue, but also the opportunities that the technology available to us uh, presents. So we essentially, because we, we can't uh, we, we can't sort of travel all around the world soliciting people's views, we, we intend for the most part to conduct the consultation in a virtual environment. We're planning therefore a series of, of webinars of virtual consultation sessions. We hope to put on a great many sessions in different time zones in different parts of the world. We hope to record the sessions so that people can catch up with sessions that look interesting to them that took place when they were um, in bed asleep. For, for example, and we're hoping to use some, some creative processes so that uh, we're not just inviting people to come to a session and, and, and listen to several experts speak, although there will be some sessions with some experts speaking. Uh, but we want, at the end of the day, we're, we're hoping to create a process that will allow for quite a lot of interaction, debate, dialogue among cooperators around the world. Now, then what happens? Okay, so 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 a lot of a lot of things are said. What do we do with it all? This is where the advisory group will play an instrumental role. And this is why we've used the word reflection as well as consultation. So the intention here is that the advisory group will not just assist with the consultation process and attend to the consultation process, but also deliberate over the views that are expressed through the consultation. And at the end of the day, the advisory group is tasked with making recommendations to the board of the ICA. Those recommendations will speak to what we do with it all. Do we make any changes to the statement on the cooperative identity? Do we make changes, for example, to the guidance notes? Do we want to undertake other actions that will deepen our cooperative identity, that will protect our cooperative identity. So my expectation is that the advisory group will land on a set of recommendations to the board of the ICA. And those recommendations are going to be informed by the consultations, but I want to stress here that this is not a polling process. So we're not going to, it's not going to be enough to say, okay, uh, a thousand people spoke and, and 700 of them said, you know, we should do X or Y. Uh, we need at the advisory group to look at it all in the, in the, in the larger context, in the light of uh, 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 all of the, all of the inputs, which include the deliberations undertaken by generations before us. At any rate, we'll come to a conclusion 
will recommend will make recommendations to the ICA board. If the board of the ICA deems it appropriate to make any changes, for example, to the statement on the cooperative identity, then a whole other process will be invoked, which would entail taking those proposals to two general assemblies of the ICA. And at the end of the day, the members of the ICA then would make the decision. But of course, there'll be there, there are lots of things that are within the purview of the board. So if, if, if a recommendation is made to, to make changes to the guidance notes, uh, perhaps just bringing them up to date, or to produce other materials or supports for the cooperative identity, that of course is within the authority of the ICA board and uh, it can take the decision to go ahead and do that. So that's a very quick um, sketch of the process as we see it. But I, I just want to stress that um, we're mindful of a number of challenges. Language is a challenge and get down to the grass roots. It will be important in our online sessions to have interpretation for the same reason. But we're also thinking that we can, uh, we can perhaps produce some tools that cooperatives in different parts of the world can take and use on their own to study the statement on the cooperative identity, uh, to, 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 to answer questions with respect to how well it has stood the test of time and to provide their feedback. And that is something they could do in their own language. I know it's all very, very ambitious, but we really want to um, involve as many people as we can uh, so that at the end of the day, we can say we had a, we had a fully participative, pro participative process, a democratic process. Now, uh, a worry about participants in the process. ICA members, of course, the sectoral bodies that are part of or associated with the ICA are different thematic committees. So for example, our research committee, our, our, our law committee, our gender equality committee, our youth committee, the regional boards of the ICA, of course, the regional counterparts where they exist of the sectoral bodies and the thematic committees and of course the global board. So that these are the formal uh, components of the ICA. But beyond that, we want to draw in regional uh, sectoral and apex uh, bodies. So the, the national federations of cooperatives, for example, in different, in different countries. I've mentioned primary cooperatives, but also individual cooperators. Um, and then interested stakeholders from outside the cooperative uh, movement. So we have cooperative registrars in many countries. We have with us today, people from the International Labour Organization, which has had a, a, an association going back to its, 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 its very beginning with the cooperative world. So we're very interested in what these different stakeholders who are not formally part of the cooperative movement have to say on the subject of our identity.